Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another series of Winning Mondays. And today is very special and it's very different because today we're going to talk about a very important and yet a very tough topic. We're going to talk about the property market's review, the key insights and the budget impacts. And today, uh, in order to talk about this topic, there's uh, we can't think of anybody else except our special guest uh, today. Join me to welcome the immediate past presidents of MIEA, Madam Chan Ai Ching, on the show right now. Okay, join me to welcome her. Yeah. Hello. All right. <laughs> Hi, and I just want to stress on right today is special number one. We have Ai Ching. Second, we are not going to go live on on Facebook. And you know what? Because we don't go live on Facebook, right? We posted the link. And just now, like, be, be, beginning of the show, we have so many spammers actually join in the shows. <laughs> and it's like, thanks to all the support team that we managed to remove many of them. And it's just so happening that so everybody's just going to come in and, and join us for, uh, for today's uh, show. And uh, before we're going to kickstart, before I'm going to get Ai Ching to share what she has, uh, what she has in her mind, I'm going to do a poll, right? Uh, I'm going to bring back you know, this poll and I'm going to ask everyone. Uh, I'm going to just launch the poll right now. Okay, so now you should be able to see this uh, post. Comparing the first half of 2023 and first half of 2024, how did you do, right? First one, you did, you did uh, better by a lot. That uh, second one, you did better by a little bit. Third one is like, it's about the same, right? Uh, and the fourth one is worse. Oh, I didn't keep track. I actually don't know. Actually, I did. am I doing better or am I not? Okay, let's, let's join me. Like we have about 40 people in this, uh, in this uh, call right now. And let's see how, what's the, what's the result like? I think you're able to see the poll as well, right? Yeah. Then you, you're going to dissect it later. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how everyone feels. Yeah, yes, how everyone's feeling. So weird, yeah. uh, just now on the chat, there were a lot of those spammers. Uh. What happened? Uh? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> as, in, as recent as just now as well. This, yeah, this, it uh... just keep coming. So we need a cyber security team. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if we had it on live, we wouldn't even know this problem that we had. Right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So it's a wise choice for us to even uh, come in and, and see how it, how it goes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm right, you know, many people come in you know, because of the topic and definitely because you are on the show. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we have uh, 48% of the people has participated. Let's, let's have more than 50, 50, 60%, then we can close the poll. All right, 30 more seconds to go. Okay, if you have not participated in, in this poll, uh, please uh, just vote for, for one. Whether like uh, comparing to first half of 2023 versus first half of 2024, how did you do? Do you do better by a lot? Do you do better by a bit? You do a, about the same or you think that you did, you did worse or you didn't actually keep track? All right, so we have uh fifty four percent of participants actually, uh, so we have many more coming in at the same time as well. Maybe a little bit more. So as of now, we have uh while we're waiting for the rest to actually uh participate in, uh we have nineteen percent say that they actually did better uh by a lot. 29% say that they actually did better by a bit. And 14% say that they're about the same. And about 24% say that actually they did worse. And about 14% 14 say that they actually didn't keep track. Well, All right, I think it's like we can, we can end the post right now. Yeah. Okay, so what 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 do you, what do you think? Um, I think with... with uh, <laughs> the result that has been uh, out right now. I think With it's very diverse. Of... Sorry? It's a very diverse uh, reply. Okay, so I like to take the better by a lot and better by a bit together. So if you take better mm. by a lot and better by a bit, then it's 19 plus 29. So it's like 30%. That is about 48%. Yeah, Close almost... to 50% of people think that they actually, you know, like uh, do better. better. Okay. Well, this is good. And... Yeah, and about the same, there's 14. So if you put all that, all the positive ones together, so I think we have about 60%, la, 62, right? Together. Mm. 
Worse, of course, yeah, depending on the segment that you are, some people may feel they are worse, but it also could be other matters as well. And then, of course, did not keep track. This one, yeah, sometimes a lot of us also are our so-called autopilot. Uh, we just let live life as it comes. Uh, we don't plan. We just hope for the best. And then, you know, we, we just, just cruise it. <laughs> yeah. And, and some, some fortunate people actually, how to say, uh, they, 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 they truly live their life like that and their real estate business as well. And they did okay. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm not here to judge the results, but I'm, I'm just saying that it is good that um, the general audience here today feels that they are doing better this year compared to the first half of 2023. That's a positive sign. And we'll see whether their sentiments and their performance matches what's happening in uh, the Malaysian uh, economy as well as the uh, property scene. Uh. So I think then it'll match very well. Uh. So we had to keep this poll. Uh, um, yes, 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 yes. We'll, we'll, just we'll... save it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So now, now it's over to, over to you to tell us, right? No, what the agents felt that they actually did better. A majority of, of them, more than 50% say actually they did better uh, compared to first half of 2023. Now, let's see. What's the country performance? Is it <laughs> resonate with the same as well? Okay. All right. Let me just share my screen. Oh dear. Where is my... Hey, the screen. Wait, just give me a sec. Huh? Yes. No worries. Uh, for yeah, some time. reason, the... Uh, my... Okay. Maybe I didn't pop up the screen yet. Okay. All right. Let me just share the screen. Yes. Okay. So, right. Okay. All, all good? The screen's all good? Yes, it's all good. We can see it. Okay. All right. So today, I think uh, that the topic that Nicholas and, and the team wanted me to cover was on the first half of 2024 snapshot, uh, Malaysian economy, the property market as well. And also a little bit about budget 2025 and how it would affect um, us uh, in the real estate uh, sector. Okay, I uh, there are some slides that I shared during SOC, but some of you were there, um, that they are re repetitive, but it's okay. I think it's important that uh, when we look at the um, data, right, we have to flow the data. La, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the country's GDP. La. So whenever you want to know whether any country is doing well, GDP is the number one tracker. La. It's the simplest and easiest uh, you know, figure for us to just get the number and we know roughly the whole economy, how was it faring. So I think Malaysia, uh, we did very well, I would say, compared to our neighbours. I think in, in the region, probably we are on par with, uh, I think, Vietnam and Philippines. I think Vietnam and Philippines also had about 6% GDP growth. So we are doing better than the others in ASEAN, but uh, on par with uh, the growth of Philippines and Vietnam, so to say, in terms of GDP. Uh, then when we talk about... Um, Looking at the trend, right? Don't be alarmed that oh, why does it look like it's coming down, right? That means mm, yeah. it's going up here, then it's coming down. Don't 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 worry about that. As long as it's positive, right? It is already a good sign. It's only how far positive we are. So are we fourteen point four percent positive or are we five point nine percent positive? But either way, it is good, right? Yeah. The good definitely... thing is the quarter by quarter is actually improving. Yeah. All right, and then this one is a rebound, lah. Seriously, because of the COVID and everything, this is definitely a rebound. So. To, to sustain double-digit GDP growth is very difficult. Uh. I think only a couple of countries did that. Uh. I think maybe China in the earlier days, right? But I think majority single-digit growth is already very good. Uh. Okay, so because uh, what, what helped uh, this GDP growth is because, of course, strong household spending. Okay, later we'll talk a little bit more about that. And of course, we have a lot of investment activities and things. Okay, so then when we look at what the year will end with, right? So the, the Bank Nagara and all that, they forecasted that at the end of the year, that's uh, based on the, the GDP growth of the entire country, they're looking at five or four, la, depending how it goes. But I think it may end as the real GDP growth of around about this positive sign, la, okay? Because of sustained household spending and again, because of what we mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's look a little bit about the different segments of uh, growth Okay, so normally, again, I look at this figure also uh, because data is very complex, uh, you know. There's so many things uh, and so many information. Sometimes uh, we drown already. When we look at the numbers, uh, we already uh, have big sun already, right? So for me, uh, I, I, I look at a few things. I like to look at private consumption because I want to know are people spending, okay, private consumption. Private investments, these two. And then I'll look at the supply side which is the services, manufacturing, agriculture, mining, and construction, right? So I, I'm not really, I, I don't really look, at, of course, people look at net export, lah, but I think mm. for me, I, I like to keep things simple. So I want to see, are people spending more? Mm. Yeah. Yep. So if it is, then, okay, good. Because then which is a good sign. 
yes, it's a good sign. Really. It's a good sign because when people spend means they have access, they have money, they are positive about the marketplace. They have a lot of things that is probably going well for them. Therefore, they, they can increase the spending. And then, of course, when it comes about uh, when you talk about this uh, businesses, right, uh, manufacturing services, private investments increasing means the confidence of businesses are there, all right? Mm. So that part of it, uh, the demand side is there. La. So then when you look at the supply side of services, manufacturing, this one also shows growth, right? That means more people coming into the place. But I think that was a bit of a slack in mining. La. So I, I don't know why. I didn't read into the details. I only like to see that the figures are moving upwards okay maybe let's let's look at the next slide where it goes a little bit more into the details right okay mm. so i think uh, when you look at the year by year so they even had a forecast and an estimated lah, of course right because the whole year of 2024 haven't ended yet so 2025 um is also a forecast right so i think when you look at like all the different segments overall all economic sectors registered positive growth lah, in 2024 moving into 2025 that means as far as the economic sectors of Malaysia indicators are concerned, all the, 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 the economies and all that are on the positive side. Lah. So you see, because they felt that a lot of things have improved, consumption has improved, uh, foreign demand also has improved, production, everything. Lah. So this, this, um, this slide that I have shows a snapshot of how, how the economies and Bank Negara and all that, they feel that the, um, the, the performance of these various uh, sectors uh, will perform in the following years. Uh. So when you look at, uh, okay, so then, then we look at a um, little bit more about household spending. Yeah. Okay. So again, I also look at going upward trend when you want. I, you know, okay. So you look at about uh, retail trade going up. We talk about pri uh, private sector wages uh, about the same. We took at employment mm. levels going up and we also talk index of motor vehicle trade also going up. So it's quite it's quite an interesting, um, uh, you know, everything is on the up because of higher household spending supported by continuous, a little bit of growth in wage. Like, I wouldn't say uh, Malaysia, our wages have gone up a lot. Like. I mean, it's not like everybody experienced tremendous improvement uh, in terms of their personal income, right? Not really. But at least uh, it's not declining. That's a good sign, yeah? And what I really like is that employments are on the rise. That means um, uh, our, actually our country's unemployment rate uh, is very, very low. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's 3.3%, which is very mm. healthy uh, for a country, very, very healthy for a country with such low unemployment rate. Uh, okay? So, of course, consumer spending to improve going forward because of all these um, policies and also, uh, uh, how to say, a stability of the economy and also the um, improvement in their personal life circumstances as far as, um, you know, this, uh, their ability to earn is concerned. Okay. Oh, yes, I was right there. Here, 3.3%. So if you look at it... The unemployment rate, yeah. Very small, right? Okay, now I make it bigger. So it's about balance. Uh, unemployment rate is 3.3%. Same as quarter one, same as quarter two. So I think uh, in terms of labor force or so, we've increased a little bit. I wouldn't say it's very good, but uh, these are all positive indicators. Lah. So there's a lot of reports that y'all can find, but to me, I just like to know this figure, only, this unemployment rate. If this one goes up too much, then I start to worry because then... Uh, it would mean that either the businesses are suffering and they cannot hire more people or that um, uh, and, and then the, the ripple effect will be felt later already. Yeah. So, so that's what I look at. Okay. Then when you look at the other segments of economic growth, then you, of course you need to look at infrastructure projects. So we are quite, Malaysia, one thing very good, we have a lot of infrastructure developments. We have the rail, we have the, the, the we have the, um, how to say that the, the roads uh, to, to support the businesses and all that. And I also wanted to come a little bit about Maida's findings about the total investment approvals that Malaysia has enjoyed uh, uh, in the last, uh, I mean, the last few years. Uh. So I think, of course, everyone knows about the recent um, the investments of the data centers. Yeah, the, the data centers are coming in and all that. Uh, very, I think uh, the growth has been tremendous uh, as far as Malaysia's, you know, tiba -tiba, uh, like we, we popped up into the radar and everybody wants to come and set up an, uh, a center in Malaysia. Uh. So this phenomenon is, was only the last few years. Uh. So it wasn't like 10 years ago when all these things started. It was more rampant in the last couple of years. Uh. So I think maybe because our government policy has changed, we were more mm. outward looking I think we have to thank our Prime Minister for this. He has always been visiting countries. You know, every time he visits one country, he visits one uh, factory or one plant overseas, 
and then he tries to encourage them to come and establish a uh, plant in Malaysia. For instance, Tesla, right? I mean, who would yes. have thought? <laughs> who would have thought that would uh, you know Tesla would invest in Malaysia? But it's because of our prime minister and his outward. Uh, looking policy to bring in uh, more of this foreign investment into Malaysia. And I tell you, uh, the ripple effect of all these uh, is felt downstream towards many industry. Right? So sometimes you think that, oh, yeah, the car industry doesn't affect us, uh, doesn't affect me or what, right? But actually, there's a lot of ripple effect from every one single um, foreign direct investment into Malaysia. Lah. So, um, of course, manufacturing and services, uh, usually MIDA will track manufacturing or services. So normally our services and our manufacturing is about quite balanced in terms of its approved investment performance. Uh. Okay, so I what, what we like to see is that the overall, uh, so I think of course in year 2020, if you look at the chart, of course there were less approved investments because, you know, that was all the COVID era. Uh, but that rebounded immediately in the following year and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, tapered a little bit downwards in 2022, but it went up again in 20. Uh, 23 la. but not to worry about this going up or down it's not it's not the most important matter the matter is that there are people uh, there are investments there, there are investments actually coming in yes yeah. uh, that is the important part la. okay so let, let's break down a little bit of some of these people that have come la. who are they actually right okay so let's, let's look at this okay of course we said that the highest investment approvals was ever recorded in 2023 yeah yeah if you go back to this slide here right wait how do I go back? Yeah. There, highest, ma, 330 compared mm. to 309, compared to 211 and all this, right? Okay. So what happened? So of course, there were many sectors that were, that were, uh, that the investments came in from, but the majority is of course from services and also manufacturing. Lah. Uh, primary is basically uh, mining and all this. Uh. So, but we usually track the manufacturing and the services sector. Okay. Mm. So then we talk about, hey, who is actually coming to our country? Who is bringing in the foreign investments? Uh? into Malaysia or are we a lot of domestic investments or are we talking about foreign a lot coming in so, <laughs> so then surprisingly uh, if we look on the right hand side here Austria is number one you know in terms of the approved investments uh, into Malaysia you know Austria yeah this is unheard of you know I mean, can you think of what company from Austria is really big that can big an impact and investment into Malaysia wow that would be interesting if any of you may you know may happen to know right Oh, uh, Singapore, of course. Singapore has been investing in Malaysia for the longest time, obviously. In fact, we expected that Singapore would probably be a major one. But uh, mm. I think in the first half of 2024, it was Austria. La. Most likely, most likely, I'm not, I cannot confirm because I don't have the breakdown of all the investments that came in. But I believe this could be the ATNS uh, plant in uh, Kulim, in Kedah. Uh, where they came in to do their their, their tech, high-tech stuff uh, there. La. So that's why it's over time the investments are, are of a large amount. Lah. Okay, then Netherlands also. China, of course, China has always uh, identified Malaysia as a very key uh, a place for them to invest. Later, I'll show you some of the examples of, of that. Lah. And of course, Taiwan, maybe in semiconductors. Netherlands, I'm not too sure. Uh, we have to break, we have to, if for this, I need to buy the data to break down the... Uh, yeah, who, I need to go, go okay. deeper on, the, on it. Yeah, yeah, who actually came, right? Okay, so these are like some of the examples of uh, notable projects uh, in the year 2023 that invested uh, uh, strongly lah, in the services sector. You see, we have companies like, this one's from, from uh, well, maybe smaller. Let me make it bigger. Like from China. Okay, so we have this company called GDS IDC Services. Okay, so what they do, they're setting up data centers or whatever. So they what did they do, where where they're located. So, so MIDA actually tracks all this and gives information to the public, right? What is happening in the marketplace. Uh. So then if you look at, uh, even these are worldwide holdings, our own uh, Malaysian own company, their country of origin is Malaysia. So they're investing into what? Waste to energy. So again, it's coming into uh, a solid waste management system. They talk about all that and their plant is going to be in Selangor, potentially providing 84 more manpower with a 1.27 billion of investment, right? Then, of course, we have another one here, uh, Valerum Group. I think Valerum Group, I think a lot of people know, right? If you happen mm, yep. to buy some of the luxury goods. Oh, the luxury goods, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, they are the, they, they actually supply quite They're a bit key, of it. What? Yes, I did key not distributors, know. yeah. Yeah, and I did not know that they are in this um what do you call it uh, environment what is a uh, um is this some sort of an environmental uh efficiency something and they are also investing quite a bit and expanding as well yeah of course they are based in KL uh. so these are like some of the examples of some projects that that uh, 
that the investors have come in. These are all main, uh, there are two locals, one foreign, but there are many, there are many. These are just some of them in the services sector. And I also took some from the manufacturing sector lah, for the year 2023, right? So we have people like uh, this from Singapore coming in. INV, new material. So they are in, based in Penang. So they have manpower and what investments they're bringing in. Then, of course, we have a lot of China uh, mm. companies, uh, you know, China coming in with this EVE Energy Malaysia plant uh, in Kulim. I think Kulim, uh, Kulim plant, 1.9 billion, you know, and also Koreans. <laughs> we also have investment from Korea. What? Ochi <laughs> Kumho of, of sorts, right? And, and they're all in different segments, right? So these are the industry for chemical and advanced material. Like this one is in transportation technology and this is in chemical also. Lah. So it depends. So there's a lot of people coming in, you know. So imagine uh, if you are the one who have contact with EVE and Energy Malaysia and set up a plant in Kulim Kedah. You know, the, the potential of your, your income, right? <laughs> you know, as a real estate person, right? Sourcing all these, uh, uh, I think uh, the the what I wanted to share is that there is a lot of it, right? Uh, these are only after the fact because when they are in already, then we know they're here, right? Yeah. But they are, what about the before? That means how about knowing who they are before they came here, right? Uh, so I think that's the intelligence that is uh, more important. La. So this one will require a bit of international connections with these various countries so that we can, how to say, uh, we establish the contact and then, uh, you know, so I, I know a few real estate uh, agents who have a lot of inroads into China and they have brought in quite a number of investors buying direct uh, into Malaysia. So they just focus on that only and they happen to have a uh, connection there and 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 that's how they expand their business. Uh. So from there, then they spill over. Because when, when Eve comes in, okay, let's say Eve comes in, right? They don't come in alone. There are a lot of, um, how to say, uh, uh, related uh, companies or industries or supportive products to them. So we should start looking at those. Okay, who are those who are supplying materials to them? Or who are those... Mm. Um, uh, you know, or, or need their services or something like that. So then from there, we can talk about spillovers, right? We can talk about spillovers of, uh, the, rather than just read, oh, this company came in, oh, this company came in. Who else is going to follow them come in? Yeah. Yeah. How, how would one, like, uh, uh, I mean, based on your experience talking to all these agents, right? How yeah. would one able to anticipate and also see, apart from having the connections, not everyone will have a connections, but mm -hmm. how would one able to probably tap into this intelligence in your yeah. opinion. So, so if, if for me, I would just look at one of them. Okay, let's say, let's say mm. I look at Eve, right? I look Eve, at Eve, yep. I say, uh, okay, what, are, what is their industry about? Okay, so the industry was about transportation technology, right? So I say, mm. okay, so they are doing like, um, they collaborate with auto cars, uh, you know, like BMW and all these things, right? So then we talk about parts, right? Auto parts mm. or what? <laughs> so then we slowly go into and break it down and say that, okay, so what do they need? Who, do, who supplies them, um, Certain chips all these or parts, yeah. Applies them certain parts. So you can go and break it down into that. And then you know that, okay, if they already have a plant in Malaysia, either number one, they will look for a local supplier. Okay, so that means local manufacturer. Who are the local manufacturers going to support them? So likely those guys may expand their business, right? Okay, so let's go find them first. And then who else? So we, we have to puzzle the pieces together. Then only uh, you you can you can you can make through the spillover benefits uh, of all these uh investments that have come in. Right, so you gotta open the eyes and see a little bit, uh, and it becomes very exciting right now. You know, like we look at it you now, like from <laughs> from this information itself, it actually spills up a, a lot of uh, potential opportunities. You no, know? correct, and also job opportunities. Though, for those who are hunting jobs for people, right? I mean, that's all all of that. So there's a lot more. I I just showed a few any this on the services sector, a few any actually. Uh, okay. So then this is also another very interesting chart. These are the notable flagship investment projects. Uh, by the different countries that have come into Malaysia. So earlier I showed some, right, which you all have never heard, right? <laughs> right? Mm. But these are the ones that, oh, the whole world knows they are here, lah. you know, the kind, right? So then when you look at the US, right, the US already had four of these uh, companies uh, really putting in big investments into Malaysia. Lah. So of course, Google, everybody know they're investing 9.4 billion. I think we've been talking about this for, for a while. Malaysia is very happy. That's why we shout all these good news. Then we're also very happy Microsoft is coming with another 2.2 billion in cloud and AI infrastructure. But of course, over mm. the next four years, lah, then we even have the Amazon Web Services yeah, for cloud computing infrastructure. 
Uh, so of course, this one also over years, uh, maybe 10 years like that, they will start investing little bit by little bit. And this is already in, in, in here, Tesla. I think, I think probably this was one of the first few companies that came in when our prime minister took over, right? Yeah, I think that was one. Now, of course, um, China, we have um, this uh, nation gate partnering with X-Fusion Partners, 1.7 billion or so to set up facility here. Of course, we also have um, the uh, Arabs, United uh, UAE site coming in also for renewable energy. Actually, uh, Malaysia, uh, we are actually very, how to say, uh, we're a very friendly party to the world, you know. So uh, most countries are uh, kind of like to invest in Malaysia. Yeah, quite kind of, mm. kind of. Especially uh, our Middle East friends. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the other thing that I didn't share with all of you yet is... Uh, that Malaysia is growing uh, as a really, um, how say, uh, it's an international ranking halal um, certification hub, you know. Do you know that all the Middle East people, uh, when they see our halal cert, uh, Malaysia halal cert, uh, whoa, all respect, you know, because uh, our standards uh, of this halal thing, right, is really uh, very well recognized. And do you know that now uh, there's how many industrial parks, uh, halal industrial parks in Malaysia, so this is another potential uh, for all those who are looking. Uh, a halal industrial parks uh, is another going to be a big wave uh, moving forward. There's a, at least already uh, like three to five halal industrial parks mm. around Malaysia. And I think this is set to grow uh, because of the demand uh, of our halal, uh, you know, halal cert, uh, so to say. Uh. Uh, so we should be proud. At least Malaysia, uh, we should be proud for this. Really, we, we are really very well known for this. Uh. Of course, Germany, of course, we... Uh, they've always invested into Malaysia actually from, from years ago. But I think Bosch came in a bit more uh, strongly with a semiconductor back-end side. And of course, we have these other ones uh, also coming up in the north. Uh. So these are mainly in the north because north side of uh, Penang side is more on uh, semiconductors, high-tech and things like that. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, our very own Malaysians uh, uh, <laughs> having our own uh, uh, investments over here as well. Uh. Mm. Okay. Very interesting, right? All right. Okay, so enough about that investments and all that. So let's talk a little bit about our our OPR because that really affects loans and when it affects the cost of borrowing, then it also affects the, the buyer's uh, decision-making process. Uh. So nothing much to say because it's very stable. <laughs> yeah, so it's just back stable. to pre-COVID era. Yeah. Yes, so very stable at three. And, uh, and I think a lot of economists are saying that they don't forecast any change until next year, June, uh, at least. Uh. Uh, but then again, uh, because the, the US presidential election is coming up soon in November, so uh, we do not know once the, the new team takes over, what are their policies, uh, what they're going to do to, uh, you know, with the rates and all that. So that's to be seen. Uh. But I don't think, at least for the next uh, the next quarter, when they had this meeting on the OPR, right, I don't think there'll be major uh, changes. Uh. Okay, uh, credit growth, very important. right? When I, I said already, uh, when, when you see the economy, when the people want to borrow money, they want to, uh, you want, they want to grow their business, they want to do that. Uh. So they, of course, the growth of the loans have to go up. Uh. So some people say, wow, there's so much outstanding loans. Yeah, you can look at it that way. But it also shows that the confidence and the, and the ability of them to get the loan in the first place. You think the banks simply give people loans just for, you know, just, just for the sake of it? No. So the fact that the business loans, go, gro loans have grown, which means that either the business's performance are doing better, their financials are better, their books are better, therefore the banks are willing to lend them and, and, and the kind of thing. So when you look at the numbers like that, then you say, okay, overall, good. That's all. No need to look too into the detail. What, how many percent? What, but, but, but. No. <laughs> don't, don't. Overall, like the, the confidence level, you know, that the market is overall, the outlook is good. That like, more, more yeah. people are actually expanding their business, which is actually right. a good sign. Yeah. yeah. So don't worry about this word called outstanding, you know, outstanding loans. Sometimes we feel like, oh, outstanding loan means it's bad. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's two ways you can look at it. Yeah, that's why I say data. It's always two ways you can look at it. So you have to be a little bit careful, uh, not not to let it, uh, you know, uh, you know, paralyze you uh, by by these kind of words. Uh. So what, whatever imp important to note is that if there's increase in loan growth, there's actually mm. increased in activity lah. Uh. So actually, it's it's a positive sign. All right. We talk about NPLs that we worry, la, non-performing loans. There we worry, okay? Right. So, uh, again, these loans for uh, residential and commercial properties, uh, the opportunities are there because, of course, a lot of um, uh, investors or buyers of properties, right, they want they apply for loans, but unfortunately, only 43.5% of them actually secured the loan. So, the balance of these 60% guys will probably need to fix their documents or 
they were just trying their luck. Lah, okay? But yet, there's a big opportunity of amount of uh, investors and people wanting to buy, not just for residential, lah, also for non-residential, which means commercial and industrial properties. So this is also very healthy because uh, we are not to say that wow, our loan approval rate is only 30%. That would mean that wow, 70% rejected. you know. But we are actually quite coming up to about 50. I think it's relatively healthy. Lah. So that means I always look at this in terms of simple numbers. If two persons mm. uh, were to, I mean, what? Okay, two, two buyers for a property, right? Both submit loan. Okay, 50% chance uh, one will get loan approved, one won't get loan approved. Lah. That kind of numbers. Lah. Of course, it's not for every case because there are some transactions I remember. Uh, I think one property, uh, there was one time uh, it was uh, project marketing, if I'm not mistaken. One of my agents were telling me, uh, she sold that same unit four times, you know, because uh, loan rejected, the first buyer loan reject. Second buyer, she found loan reject also. Third loan reject, if only the fourth buyer, uh, the, the, the deal went through. So it, again, it depends on what segment of the market you're working in. So this number is actually the average. So not always you say that, oh, if I found a buyer, uh, sure, this loan will go through. No, it depends on the market and the type of buyers you're dealing with also. Lah. So it, it's a combination. But this is a good average for us to work on. So I don't want you all to be disappointed. Like, oh, I found a buyer already. Then I later tried the loan. Ah, yeah. Loan tak lepas, right? So it's, it's quite... actually not, not absolute at his like saying that no, if every, it's a one out of two. So every every two applications I send that uh, I will actually get one oh, approved. It no, really no. depends. No? Some agents yes. might get 100% approval. No? Some agents might might exactly. didn't actually get it. It depends yeah. on the profile of the, the buyers also that you work with. So it depends on the market and the profile of the buyers you work with. But overall, the figures are saying 40 over percent, 50 percent. It's, it's decent numbers. Lah. Okay, then on the businesses side, we also talk about uh, the SME financing. Uh, so also on the rise. And then if you look at the uh, approval rates, right, for SME financing, uh, it's actually quite strong. Yeah, it's 81.9 and 84.3%. So these are more for working capital loans. Uh. So that means when, when businesses want working capital, means they want to expand, right? If not, why I need more money? <laughs> if I don't want to expand, I don't do anything, I'll be quite happy as it is, right? But because they want to expand and therefore they need working capital and working capital loans are actually very hard to get. Uh. So if the fact that it's growing, uh, it shows that the the, the banks, are, how to say, they are confident uh, in loaning uh, to these companies to take the risk uh, to, for, their, for their business. Yeah, so that, that mm -hmm. is how I look at, uh, look at this, this part of it. Uh. Okay. So that finishes the, the Malaysian overall. So now we go into a bit of the NAPIC numbers. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so we when dive you... deep now, right now. Uh, not really dive deep. Lah, but... <laughs> but, <okay. laughs> Haven't, uh. Surface, surface. All today we're talking surface. But if you really want to dive deep, uh, we take, uh, you know, I think a few days or so cannot go through all. Uh. But generally, I think it's okay for us just to know roughly only. Okay, so this is Malaysia's key property market trends uh, for transactions and uh, also this part is the unsold, right? So if you look at it, uh, Okay, uh, you don't look at this like, wow, there's a drop. No, 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 no. Because these are all yearly figures. This is the mm. half-year figure. This is the oh. first half. Yep. Ah, so this is the first half figure, first half figure, first half, first half, right? Okay, but the general trend of residential property transaction is coming back up strong. Um, industrial market has always uh, fed very well, even in the even through the era of the, the what pandemic. Commercial property, of course, took a huge dip. Uh. Wow, terribly, terrible dip. In uh, 2020, uh, that's why I was selling one. Some of my friends who are focusing on commercial, uh, their income dropped by dropped to 10 percent. Imagine, dropped to 10 percent. I'm surprised they didn't quit the <laughs> the industry, but they stuck on. Uh, and I tell you, uh, come back last year and the year before, uh, that guy uh, has made back his millions, lah. But he suffered, uh, uh, Having said that, he really suffered during this period because commercial really? was really, really, lah. Uh, you hardly not hardly moving at all. Hardly moving, lah. Okay, so when you look at the first half of 2024, we are very strong in terms of numbers. We have almost 200,000 transactions, already hit 105 billion, you know, <laughs> already. And, and of course, by regions, of course, we, we talk about a very balanced central, northern and southern region. You see, we are very balanced really. Last time, uh, central region used to grow way a lot more than northern and southern, right? But now, uh, these, three, these three corridors uh, are get, uh, about... The same really because northern has benefited a lot from the industrial 
um, you know, all those uh, big companies coming in. And the Johor side here is because of the uh, proximity to Singapore and also their special economic zones and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things happening in these two areas uh, that have uh, spiced things up. Lah. Central, we have always been the, the main hub, right, for the, the nations. Yes. So we, we didn't actually do very much <laughs> here, but we still maintain a very strong numbers because the naturally, uh, the population likes to gravitate towards the central. Uh, Right. Okay. Of course, East Malaysia and East Coast also is picking up speed, but uh, not at the rate of these other three segments. Uh. Okay. So I also look at this first half, uh, first half, first half of 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Asa Khan is going up, is good uh, in terms of transaction volume. And then if it, in terms of value, it's also going up. Okay. So don't need to worry about, uh, oh, why, uh, you know, if it's coming down and all that. No, everything is on the upward trend for now. Okay, all right. Okay, so I also do, did a bit of a breakdown um, on the um, how, it, how we have fed and what is the percentages. Are. So these are my calculations. Uh, so they are not 100% accurate, but they're just enough for me to, to guide the, the, the thoughts, I mean, the, um, the discussion today. Lah. Okay, let's say in 2020, right? Let's say the volume was at, uh, value was at 25 billion, right? By 2024, in the same era, the growth uh, is actually 93%. So it's actually almost doubled the growth of the amount uh, that we used to do in 2020. You know? it, that, that is very, very strong, right? Commercial even did better. See, in 2020, it was so thorough, right? But in uh, 2024, uh, the growth uh, is 179%, you know, in terms of value. So my friend is right. When he suffered here, today his mm. income is 179% better. La. I mean, if you in a, in a straight uh, way of saying uh, he has improved it's at least double it there yeah 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 so so it is really in comparison uh, and then if you look at industrial similarly 150 uh, percent growth in terms of value then volume also I did a bit of minus calculation here and there but this is my my own personal uh, assessment of it because people view data differently right so I just wanted to know like that because I want to know the growth from five years to this year what has it been like right mm. uh, okay Let's move to the next slide. And of course, if you look at the overall Malaysia uh, transacted data, uh, I did it from 2015 all the way to 2024, right? So every year, um, we we were doing quite well in 2013, 2014, 2015. But of course, there was a little bit of dip in 20... Uh, I think it started with 20... 15, 16. Uh, 2015 or no, where, where the GST, ah, 2017, when the GST came in a bit. So that was slightly affected. Then after that, people kind of got used to it. And then of course, 2020, don't talk about 2020 at all, uh, right? But there we have, you see, uh, in a short span of, uh, we thought 2020 was the worst year of our life, right? 2021 and 2025, uh, the, the timing uh, about the same really. Market mm. rebounds are uh, very fast, right? And very, very, rebound, very fast, in fact, yeah. Yeah, not only rebound, uh, grew, and further mm -hmm. grew. And by the end of this year, uh, we forecast, uh, okay, of course, this is only we, half a year, already 105. Uh. 105, just done better. Two, uh, just Kali Dua, uh, we are mm -hmm. talking about 210 billion. Sorry, so fast 2023. Yep. Already would have so fast 2023. So some of you, when y'all were saying that earlier, the poll, right? The poll said that you felt that 2024, you did a lot better. You are right. Because the numbers are stating it as you say, as you feel. If I go back to this slide, right? If I go back, eh, uh, if I go back to this slide, uh, if 2023, uh, there was, uh, let's say 2023, there was how many units? Uh? Okay, let's say 114,000 units. Uh. In first half, uh, uh, first half of 24, 114, right? This one already one to one. It's already one to one. Mm. So uh, you are right when you said that uh, you felt that this year was better because it is better. The value has grown. The, the number of units has also grown. So for those in the commercial sector, especially in the commercial sector, you will notice that, hey, maybe last year was only like 16,000 uh, units, right? I, I mean, uh, let's say units are 17,000 units. This yeah. year, the same time, uh, 21,000 units, you know. So the growth prospect uh, of your business uh, has increased so much, right? So you are right when you said that this year you feel better and you're doing better because the numbers are also agreeing with you. So you're right. Yeah, you're right. So, of course, some people say they are the same. Yeah, it's fine because it depends on the segment you're working on. All right. And then, of course, some people say I'm a little bit better. Depends again. If you were focusing on a different segment of the market, you improve a little bit or what? Asa Khan is positive moving forward. Uh, it matches the figures. So, there will be some that say that I'm doing worse. Okay. So, that part of it, we'll have to analyze. Uh, why is last year 
I mean, last year was better for you, but this year is worse. Uh, maybe it could be personal life circumstances, yeah? Or it could be uh, it could be the segment of the market you're working on, yeah? Or it could be your change of focus uh, or, or things like that. So you have to analyze because the numbers actually says everyone is generally doing better, okay? Mm -hmm. So I hope that by the end of the year, right, we got another song to sing already, lah, for twenty twenty four, and saying that it's an all time high, right? <laughs> <laughs> all time high for uh the Malaysian property segment. But it's very positive though. Like uh, I think many articles and many reviews and uh perspectives have been actually shared and written. Uh, that's uh twenty twenty four going to be all time highs. Yeah, all time high. So uh, I do not know whether it's sustained in 2025. That is to be seen. Uh, because sometimes I get mixed feelings, you know. Some people are telling me on the ground, right? They say that, actually, I don't feel that the economy is doing so well. So mm. I say, why do you feel that way? He said, I don't know. Lah. When I go out, I don't see so many people spending money and all that. But then I say, then I, then I told the guy, I said, how do you explain the numbers? I said, okay, so sometimes what we feel and what it is, can be two different things, right? So right. I say, how do you explain that? He said, I cannot explain it. I said, so how? Go on sentiments or go on data now? So sometimes I, I, I you know, sometimes I, ex I, I discuss with my friends. I say, hey, so what, what do, what do we do now? Do we go on sentiments that the market is challenging and and less agents are able to close sales, or are we looking at the the numbers on the NAPIC data and say that hey, everything's on the positive, you know? So do I go on sentiments or data? Correct, or Nick. Sentiments yes, yes, actually. Yes, yes. In fact, right, sentiment is very dangerous oh. simply because, right, like our, when we talk about market, no, what market are we talking about? So most agents potentially talking about the market that I'm in. But when we look at the entire country data, we're talking about the data of the entire country. So the, the market that I'm talking about, like, is relatively very small comparing to uh, the entire country data. And when you talk to a certain agent, they say, hey, I'm doing very well in, in their markets, you know. Mm. Yeah, so like, yeah. it really depends who we talk to, right? Are we talking to those of booming area? Are we talking to those? And also like, what sort of agents are we talking to as, as well? That you talk to people like Tony Ong, <laughs> like, <he'll be laughs> like, hey, you know, like it's ever growing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so again, so data, that's why I always say data, you have to be careful about it. These are all generic data, all generic, all overall and all these things. But when you are doing your business, you need specific data. If let's say you're focusing on Mon Chiara, you need to know Mon Chiara got how many buildings, how many units, how many size of each type of unit, which segment is moving, which one is getting old, which one the buyers are moving towards. A lot of things are need to analyze based on the, the segment of the market that you want to focus on. So trying to do overall uh, is difficult. That means, oh, you know, they, they say that, oh, so uh, some people are telling me, you know, so funny, you know, there was one, uh, uh, there was one, mm. uh, one, I think one seller of property. He said, uh, wow, so uh, the 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 value of property uh, has gone up by ten percent, right? From first half to second half, uh, So which means uh, my property uh, can sell ten percent more, lah. Uh. Ayo, I tell you, uh, that's how some people interpret data. I know. Then I was like, hey, hey, no, 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 it's it's not like this. This is the volume value of transacted data. It doesn't mean that the property value has grown by ten percent. So as that's why I say a lot of misinterpretation analysis uh, can cause a lot of problems. Uh, uh, you know, so I, I tell you, I had a good laugh with that owner. You know. I say it doesn't work that way. Uh. Last year to this year, property went up 10%. Uh. No, it does not mean that way when you look at this figure of uh, growth from this to this. It doesn't mean that. Uh. Okay, so yeah. So data, again, like I said, uh, is a double-edged sword. You have to use it carefully in order to make sure that uh, you don't um, misinterpret it. Or, or overanalyze it. Lah, okay? As long as we know everything's on a moving on a positive side, it's already a good enough indicator for us. Okay, so now the other thing I like I want to go through is actually on our over the years Malaysian house price index. Okay. It's very important when you look at a country and the house price index it goes up. We also want to know at which point does the property kind of double up in value, right? So in the early days, we like to say, early days are, not, not now, early days are those days when I first started doing real estate, we always say property will double up in value between 10 to 12 years, that time. So in the early days, we used to buy property idea. We know in about 10, 12 years, our property that we bought, let's say 300,000 will become 600,000, right? Mm. right? Based on the, the, the trend 
of the Malaysian the trend of growth, yes. right? And even if, and I thought we were the only ones who calculated it that way. But actually, when, when I spoke to Australian agents, uh, they also do the same thing. They say our property will double up in, in 10 years or whatever, uh, whatever the years were. Uh. So that was a good gauge for us in the past. But now I cannot say that we can use that uh, benchmark gauging already because I think it kind of lengthened. The, the, the time is no longer 10 to 12 years. It kind of lengthened further. But property over time, does increase in value. But again, it's a sweeping statement. Uh. What I just said is a sweeping statement. As in, I didn't take into account location. I didn't talk about the price you bought it at. I didn't talk about condition and all that, right? But as a general rule, property price will increase over time because number one, property is a hedge against inflation. And we know that inflation grows every year. Your same nasi lemak, mm -hmm. my nasi lemak bungkus that I used to buy one ringgit is three fifty. No, it's 450 now. Are you at the roadside? I can't believe it. Okay, so it went up 4.5 times in the last 20 years, right? So because of inflation, property price got to follow one, right? Because of building material costs and everything, so it kind of follow. So this is not a not an unusual trend. Lah. So what, what's happening is that whether you want to see that in the different locations, the different states, are each state growing at the same rate or not? So um, so this one kind of, the NAPIC numbers kind of break it down. Lah. But if you look at 2010 to 2020, 2024 or 2023, lah, so if the property price was about, how, how, what price was this? About 220,000 then, it is 460,000, let's say, lah, now. So let, let me give you a next chart, which actually shows the, the average house price growth, right? From 2010 to 2023. So that means we're talking about how many years? 13 years? 13 years, yep. right? Yeah. So we're talking about 13 years. So in 2010, the Malaysian average house price was 215000 right? Mm -hmm. So fast track 13 years later is 471. So in a way, the doubling up, macam still betul, eh? the 10 to 12 years, yeah. oh, it doubled up, what? In the last... Yeah, the data showed that as well. Yeah. The data showed it, lah. Okay. Uh, but of course, this is, uh, again, it's a general statement. Uh, it's general. overall in Malaysia, yeah. Yes, yes. Ge very, very general statement. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, but in Kuala Lumpur, of course, the it, we grew... Um, the, it was... Uh, of course, the prices were higher, right? Because it's more expensive, the property. So, it was 397. It almost went up to 767. Uh, but in Johor and in Selangor, the rate of growth is actually higher. So, mm. it's interesting, right? It's actually kind of interesting, this this uh, data to me. Lah. But on the average, it does show no matter which state you're looking at, whether it's Penang, it's Johor, it's Selangor, it's Kuala Lumpur, it all shows a upward positive, figure, growth. Lah. positive upward uh, value of your property. So if you bought a property in 2010, today uh, your property, you try and see uh, whether it goes, by, goes up by this average or not. So let's say you bought in PJ, right? Did your mm. property double up or not if you bought in 2010? I believe so. I very much believe so. Yeah. So anyway, so these are some of the other statistics that you can look at it. Uh, the median house prices, the population growth of each of the uh, the different states and also the home ownership by household. Uh. That means the growth of home ownership. This has also increased. Uh. Actually, in Malaysia, uh, one thing we're quite fortunate uh, uh, or, or maybe the Asian culture, we're actually cultured to buy property uh. We, we, we teach our children from young that you must own a home. You must have this, you must have that. So that's why the, 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 the property blurred uh, within a lot of our, our you know, uh, the population of Malaysia is very strong. And the country it's also- culturally promotes, educated. <laughs> yeah, promotes home ownership. Although I must say that there is a trend among the younger people to move into renting. But eventually, uh, if the parents, I think need another generation. Uh, because if let's say, we are the parents, right? Our children will still tell them, hey, why invest in property, invest in property, right? So that generation maybe will still be influenced by us. But that, they are, that means our children's children generation may, be, may hold a slightly different view from us. Uh, compared to our, my parents' view or my grandparents' view, again, different. My grandparents, they all are the era when they buy property. They also love to buy property, but they love to buy in cash, right? No, they save, 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 and then buy. Hardly take loan. Then came to mm. our parents' generation, a full loan, man, go maximum. <laughs> then come to our generation, worse, over than the maximum, go more, 100%, <laughs> you know, loans and all that. Uh, then come to the next generation, we are yet to see what's the trend like. La. But it's quite interesting la, because 
uh, every every time, uh, every every generation has a little bit of a different uh, consideration. Uh. But I would see uh, that in the next uh ne next generation, right, the rental market will be very strong. Uh. Rental market will be very yes, strong. Uh, probably a lot of subscriptions uh based going on as well. The trend might show. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, there's also this statistics by Reda for those who are doing uh, new projects, right? Uh, um, the, I think the overall market sentiments from the members of Reda themselves is that they are not going to launch many projects in the second half of 2024. So that's why I think if you notice, there are not, we don't hear many uh, launches, but they are optimistic for first half of 2025, which is good. Uh, so I think uh, next year, first half of 2025, I think those who are doing new projects, you will expect that there will be more uh, projects to be uh, kicked off the ground uh, in, in terms of that sector, that, that category. And of course, they also say that end financing is still an issue for them, loan rejection, low demand. That one sometimes cannot say one. Uh, is the project maybe mm. wrongly located, uh, bad price, uh, you know, wrong pricing, uh, and also the boomy lots uh, that they need to clear. So some of, they, some of them are expressing that these are the issues. Uh. So these are just information that is useful for us to know that even the developers feel that next year is optimistic. Ah, you see, when I look at data, I just want to see, oh, okay, more optimistic. Ah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all this unsold one, uh, I, I seldom want to want to look at it. Uh. To, okay, to so, touch on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that wraps our, uh, what do you call it? Our NAPIC. The NAPIC data, yeah. Uh, nothing data, right? Okay, so let's go to Malaysia Ringgit. Unfortunately, Malaysia Ringgit, uh, we were doing very well. In fact, we're the best performing um currency for this year. But I think like yesterday when I did the checking, uh, it was a 4.33. <laughs> a little bit, uh, yeah, slight. Yeah. Uh, this was probably at our best, uh, 4.2, 4.18 or something, right? But anyway, um, again, we are, I think it's all right. Of course, we hope that the 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 rate, our swing tick strengthens, yeah. Uh, but it also depends a lot on what is going to happen uh, with the US. La. Yeah. So this one, uh, this one we have no control and we just have to uh, monitor. La. And because we are not in export business, so we're mm. not so affected, right? Those in export business, I mean, I mean import business, sorry. Import business, can you imagine? La? Every adjustment la, is a loss to your bottom line, really. Right. Yeah. And Every adjustment. it just fluctuates so, so, so fast, right? Yeah. Putting. On a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when we talk, but for us, um, if let's say our currency loses strength, then it would mean that the foreign, the foreign, uh, foreign investors, right, will come in strongly into Malaysia because to take advantage of our weak ringgit lah. So there's always opportunities in every situation lah. So we sometimes we lament and say, oh yo, you know, like that, like that, like that. But try to see the other side of it. Okay lah, this has happened already. Now what can we do about this situation now? Rather than defeated, oh, give up lah. It is no use. You know, there's nothing I can do. No, I think the mindset that we should have with everything that happens to us is, okay lah. Now that this has happened, you couldn't have prevented it from happening anyway, right? Some some of our life circumstances. Now with this, what can I do lah? What is the silver lining behind this? What is the lesson I'm supposed to learn from this lah? Well, what is it, right? And then take it from there. Okay, take it on a more positive stance lah. Okay, so let's look a little bit of budget ah. Hey, anyway, how are we doing on time? Okay ah. Normally I plan ngam ngam one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we still have time, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think so people will stay even you go a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about tax relief, right? That uh the budget 2025 has offered for property buyers, right? Okay, so they said uh housing loan interest payment for first residential home. Again, uh, first time home buyers. I always tell everybody uh, in the marketplace that. The government can only give incentive for first-time home buyers. They cannot give it for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time home buyers, right? Because the mm. country's policy is to help people own a home, not help you make money, uh, uh, from the you know, uh, from the country and things like that. So I think Malaysia as a as a government as the country, they have to think about the first-time home buyers. So the incentive is given to the first-time home buyers for the first residential property. Okay. So let's look at what they are offering. Uh. They say the property, if it's up to 500000 they will give a tax relief. Uh. So it's not an outright money to you. yeah. It's a tax relief. So that means when you file your income tax at the time, you know now you have a, all of us have a standard relief of 9000 right? Just you, you just put your figure, your income there already, automatically you get a 9000 relief, right? So you have an extra 7000 there lah. Okay, all right. So uh, for this 500,000 to 750,000, 
the tax relief is capped at 5,000. And it's not for one year, it's actually for three, three years. Year. So three consecutive years, there will be some savings for you in terms of tax relief, right? So uh, if you ask me, this one is um, a sweetener for us only lah, because they didn't want to give us more. <laughs> so because the property market is already doing well. So this one is just to put something for property segment lah, so that you all don't complain so much lah, the way I look at it, right? Because <laughs> um, because you see, if let's say, uh, if let's say you are you are you are running the country and the real estate performance is so well, do you still want to incentivize the real estate performance sector? I don't think so, right? You rather use yep. the funds uh, and allocate to education or to healthcare or to tech or whatever, right? So that's what the government did. Lah, because the, the the property segment was doing well already. So the allocations uh, for the funding, right, went to the others, lah, right? Or other segments. So, but they still gave us something. Lah. We were hoping for the first homeowner's grant, right? Just like in in you in, uh, in Australia, right? They give us straight outright. If you buy your first property, they straight away give you a, a grant to buy an offset against your purchase price, that kind of thing. But they didn't look into that. There were a lot of people uh, also uh, appealing for stamp duty, exemption, HOC to come back and all that. Also not considered. Yeah. <laughs> all not considered. <laughs> we and all taste fair, it, right? It's so good. So, yeah. But to be fair, if I'm the government also, I also won't consider. You're already performing so well. So just give you a sweetener. So to me, this is not a huge amount of savings, but it's better than don't have. lah. Better than don't have. And remember, mm. this is not the first time this has ever happened. Uh, in the year uh, 2020, uh, 2009, they introduced this before. Yeah. Uh, that time, it was 10,000 relief for three consecutive years. So in those years, there were also. Yeah. And uh, and that time, uh, they li didn't limit to single buyer. They even allowed two individual buyers to claim for the relief of the same property. Right. But that was uh, that time. La. So they basically brought back a previous um relief that they 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 offered to Malaysians uh, yeah Malaysians taxpayers yeah so but I wanted to I initially I thought I wanted to show you all how how much impact it is but I think no need lah you all can calculate it um you you can use this tax calculator and you just input lah if what does seven thousand relief means to your tax payable right it actually is not a savings of seven thousand lah it's probably a savings of one or two thousand lah depending on your tax bracket. Yeah. So, but mm. oh, better than nothing, lah. Better than nothing. Okay. But what is exciting is for some of us, uh, of you who are doing segments of market that deals with a lot of, um, that means uh, people who are not under employment, either they're self-employed, they are working as freelancers, or or they don't have fixed income kind of jobs, ah. Actually, SJKP ah, is a really good plan. It's basically saying that, ah. Since yeah, your income is so volatile, right? You what one day you earn ten thousand, one day is one thousand, next month is thirty thousand, next month is two thousand, you know that kind of banks don't like one. When they see this kind of volatility in terms of income, uh, they don't like one because they say we cannot predict your pattern of payment. So because mm. of that, we don't like to give you loans, right? So but the government has introduced this housing credit guarantee scheme uh, to help with that. Right? So when you meet customers who have this kind of volatility in their income, wow, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that one, uh, no fixed income kind of thing, then when they go to the banks, right, they can opt for this housing guarantee scheme where the government guarantees the banks your loan, you know. Wow, you know? that's good. Uh, so actually, to me, it's a fantastic thing. So it's, of course, over the years, it has been snapped up. Lah, and most banks have this. So you just have to get your, um, your buyers uh, to let the banks know that they want to opt for this SJKP uh, guarantee, so-called the, the housing credit guarantee scheme. La. Of course, there's limits of 500,000. There's another one, 350 and 500,000. There's two different schemes. Uh, uh, but they, they let you uh, more than 100% guarantee on the coverage, right? That means including your MRTA and whatever in. La. And it's a simple process. If you understand the process, uh, it's basically the borrower say, okay, I want to borrow. Okay, then the bank say, okay, I check you eligible or not. Okay, let's mm. say eligible already, but I feel that still I feel I need extra guarantee. So then the banks will write to SJKP. SJKP will then give a guarantee letter to the bank and then the bank say, okay, now they have a guarantee from the government. So if anything happens to this guy, right, the government will step in and settle my loan uh, in a way, right? So then they happily lend it to the borrower. Okay, that's how it works. 
So you have an yeah, additional person to stand like a guarantor for you. La. Yeah. Which is very good. Yeah, initiative. Yeah. I think many of us didn't actually know about this. And in fact, the important questions right now is like, how would one even qualify, right? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't stay at the, the qualification website. material. Yeah, to go to the SJKP website, guys. You just have to go to the SJKP website. Then, uh, actually, I have the link here. La. SJKP, you just type SJKP, then you'll be able to go to the site and they'll give you the breakdown of all the details. La. So for mm. the last three years, la, I just put down the, detail, the details, right? So in 2023, there was 5 billion allocation for this. So there were about 20,000 people to benefit. La. That's what they generally said, right? Then in 2024, they doubled it to 10 billion, you know, to benefit 40,000. But this year, they maintain the same uh, 10 billion. And, but I don't know why they said to benefit 20,000 people instead of 40,000. So I thought that was a bit strange in the, in the speech. But perhaps maybe they expected that the property value that people are going to purchase is higher. higher la. So that's why the, the thing went that. Okay, and then of course, they also want to promote step-up financing. I think some of you may know what step-up financing is, right? It's very useful. Uh, it's, a, it's like a... It's like the first five years, the repayment is lower one. Uh, so they say that uh, the 50% of this allocation will go into step-up financing uh, for lower repayment for the first five years. Uh. I think step-up financing was made very popular by Affin Bank, if I'm not mistaken, right? They did a lot of step-up financing, which I thought was very, uh, was very innovative of them. Uh, yeah, step-up financing. Okay. Then for businesses, there's also a 20 billion allocation. So same thing as SJKP. But this is SJPP. Huh? <laughs> so this is for uh, Sharika, this is Sharika Jaminan Pembiayaan Perniagaan. So this is for the mm. SMEs who want to take a loan. And, and yet their business may have challenges like this and that. But they are yet a very promising and very uh, strong company. I mean, potential company. Then the government will also step in and also to, to give some guarantee so that the SME can continue their business. Because it's important that the SMEs got money, you know, because sometimes we need money to grow the business, right? And if we are stuck with cash flows and all that, then we are limited by our, you know, ability to grow. So I think I'm happy that the government continues this 20 billion for businesses, right? Businesses. Okay, so in terms of affordable housing, nothing very much. Uh, I mean, not, not to say nothing very much, but it doesn't, affect the majority of us, uh, 900 million has been allocated for 40, uh, to implement 48 PRR. Okay. So the sort of thinking, PRR uh, was last time PPR. So just in mm. case some of you are confused, hey, why does a new terminology? No, 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 no. It's a rebranding. Ah, rebranding, so Even yeah. the government rebrands. <laughs> so uh, the government has rebranded the uh, PPR to PRR. La. They wanted to make it more... They call it the People's Housing Scheme, la, uh, into the People's Residential um, uh, ra a, a Program Residency Rakyat, la, instead of the earlier program Perumahan Rakyat, right? So it's more focused on residential and they're going to add more on this. And I think the government is doing a good job in terms of affordable housing. Of course, everyone complains there can be more done and all that. Yeah, there's always more you can do, one, la, okay? But I think suffice to say that they are on the right track getting more of this in place. Now. Okay, so there were also a lot of other issues. Ah, I think some of you may have heard, right? Oh, you know, wow, there was somebody who said that maybe we should limit uh, the number of houses people can buy. Wow, so there was a big hoo-ha in the marketplace. Wow, how can you limit the number of buy, you know, number of properties uh, a person can own? So there was an outright rejection by the Minister of Housing and said, no, 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 there's no such thing. Okay, that earlier on, uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, even worse, I thought this was quite bad as well. Luckily, none of this carried through. You know what they wanted to do? Okay, let's say today you bought affordable housing for mm. 60000 Okay, They want to limit, you know. If next time you want to sell, you cannot sell more than, let's say, 80000 Are you? So I said, what kind of system is that? That will make the, the, the poor remain poor. You mean you know what I mean? Uh, property is a way for people to escape poverty, right? So if I bought my property today, sixty thousand, if uh, ten years later it becomes two hundred thousand, I have hundred forty thousand. You know, I'm better off today than I was when I bought the unit. You know, but mm. you if you limit that, I can only sell for eighty thousand, let's say, then I make only twenty thousand. I can't go anywhere, Adila. So wow, so this one was an upheaval a few years ago. So I'm happy that. No news really. Nobody talks about it anymore. No more. Nothing. Nobody talks about it anymore. Then there was also a talk about vacancy tax. Ah, yo. So vacancy tax looks like that. So if your property you buy, right? You buy so many properties. And then uh, it's not rented out. Okay. So you never rent out already. Uh, 
if let's say it's mm. a condo, uh, you already have to pay maintenance charge, right? With or without, yep. there, uh, you're going to buy it. Uh, okay, one. Lagi now, if let's say the unit is vacant, the country wants to tax you for vacant because you kept it vacant, they're going to tax you. Ah, yo, I tell you, when this came out, we also have an upheaval in the marketplace. Hey, cannot do all this thing. Ah, yo, how are they kill us two times? Uh? You know, that kind of thing, right? And then, of course, the, the, the most hot topic of late before the budget was the inheritance tax. Uh. Wow, mm. so it became a big hoo-ha. So people die already, want to give their property to the children, also cannot tax. Uh. Get that tax. <laughs> uh, so that was a big hoo-ha as well. And I don't think at this point, uh, this tax will be reintroduced. Uh, because if you reintroduce this tax, uh, uh, I think the, the rakyat will be very unhappy and most likely the government in office will no longer be the government in office uh, <laughs> with that. So I think the, the imposition of maximum property purchase numbers out, capping the ceiling price for selling affordable housing in the secondary market I don't think Should it should be out. Yeah. Be out. Vacancy tax or so Malaysia is not ready for this. And inheritance tax, although it happened in the 1970s in Malaysia, but it's been so many years, I think reintroducing this at this time will not be the right move. Lah. Yeah, that's my personal view. Lah. So haha, that's why I have this lady here saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think a lot of people didn't talk about this en bloc sales really, which I brought up last year when this was announced in budget 2024, right? So in budget 2024, they mentioned that, oh, okay, so now for all those old buildings, right, you don't need to get 100% people to agree already. You can get um, something that's standardized with the, the, the other countries and then we can redevelop the property, which is a good, it's a good initiative huh? because in Singapore, this happens a lot. The old, you know, those old buildings, right? Like many, very old already. Huh? So what they do is that, huh? and then they were sitting on really good land so what Singapore government allows the developers to do is to get a, a majority, I think it was 75 or 70 Two percent. Th yeah. Seven, mm. Something like that. Uh, if let's say the, the, they all agree that they want to sell the property and re uh, sell it off to a developer or something, they can do so. They do not need to get 100%. That means they don't need to get everybody to agree. If the majority of, I don't know, was it 70, 75 or 80% agree, then the whole site can be redeveloped. So a lot of uh, Singaporeans uh, who lived in, in very simple properties, uh, uh, but the location became good over time, right? Wow, I tell you, uh, they, they are, their returns are exponential. Exponential. So I think in Malaysia, it's also coming soon, the time where a lot of these old buildings uh, really, really needs to be, um, how to say, revived, refreshed. Right, so but of course, as usual, there's always a uh, tada fighting lah. <laughs> uh, the government say no. I think seventy five percent should be okay. Then we have uh, people on the house buyers association side say no. You know we cannot. It has to be hundred percent. So therefore, it's in progress. <laughs> okay. Um. Although there is no stamp duty exemption in the budget twenty twenty five anymore, and a lot of the schemes have also ended, I thought I want to remind all our agents uh, that there's still one running. There's still one more scheme running. It's also for first-time home buyers. The property price is no more than five hundred thousand, and it's for mm -hmm. residential, uh, for SBAs from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty five. So there's still one more stamp duty exemption scheme running uh, for your buyers, just in case uh, everybody forgot about this because this was back in twenty twenty one. See, this was a stamp duty exemption order in twenty twenty one. Yeah. So don't forget, uh, so residential and individual. So not only is it for the stamp duty exemption for this, but it's also for the loan as well. Eh, why cannot click? Oh, give me a sec. Oh, it can't go to the next slide. Ah, okay. Okay. So the next slide also says it's also for the loan agreement. Okay. So remember, uh, for any properties, that means until December 31st, 2025, mm -hmm. your first time home buyers, whether it's a new project or secondary market, it doesn't matter. It has to be one residential unit First time home buyers, um, not more than five hundred thousand will still qualify for this. Okay, so for those mm. of you who are still handling that segment of the market, uh, it still applies. Okay, just in case you all forgot, I tell you, majority of people have forgotten about this. <laughs> I won't cover about MM two H. All I want to say is that uh, look at this. Wealthy Chinese, you flock to Malaysia's MM two H scheme. What wow, flock, man? I like this word. <laughs> and, and notice, uh, Youth. Oh, even another 
interesting point. That means the young people don't mind coming under this scheme versus we thought uh, Malaysia, my second home, is for all the old folks, right? Nah, this is an interesting change for all of us. So I think for those who are doing international markets and have uh, buyers and all that, open your mind a bit. Yeah, Don't limit and say that Malaysia, my second home, used to be the silver hair program and therefore it's only for the old folks. No, 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 no. No more. Look at this. Silver hair program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's how <laughs> Malaysia, my second home, came about. It started with the silver hair program, evolved to the Malaysia, my second home. Lah. If you followed the property market long enough, you'll know like, a lot of <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff in the in the years. Like, eh, sorry, wait, let me just click. Eh, it's not clicking through it. Yeah, yes. I'll buy this through very fast. Okay, then uh, the last bit I wanted to cover is on the rent renewal for 2025, right? Um, so there were some of uh, some of our agents have uh, some agents and uh, not not just um Bridgefield, right we're talking about agents as a whole in Malaysia right there's a lot of concern about the rent renewal requirements because now there is this bankruptcy search that you need to uh, put in then there's also other conditions and things like that right so MIA will be organizing uh what rents need to know about the rent renewal for 2025 and also at the same time they say you know Rents are they just won't come and attend one thing, so they have another thing called the millionaire million dollar, uh, closing tips by the NREA million dollar achiever, and our very own Tony Ong is also on the panel lah. Uh. So yeah, hey. so it, can can someone share the link to all the agents uh, so that they can, uh, yeah, the admin will be sharing the link. Uh, ah, yeah. okay, so that yeah, it's already shared. He shared already. Ah, uh, so yours said register for that and attend uh, because. Not only will you know what what is the upcoming twenty twenty five rent renewal process, but also you get to hear from some closing tips uh, by these three individuals here. Yeah, all are uh, MMDA at the recent MIEA uh, NREA awards. Uh. yeah. So I'm very happy uh, to see Tony being featured in this uh, virtual event uh. So notice uh, the time is eight to ten. You know that shows how hardworking uh, our Department of Insolvency is, isn't it? Eight o'clock, so come out uh, and give a talk, you know. But because we felt that the matter is very important, uh, uh, yeah, because a lot of agents are very worried about, oh, you know, does it mean that if I, if I, for whatever reason, uh, I'm in this status, uh, is that means I cannot work? I think the answer is no, la. there is a way, right? So I want you to come and attend. And even if it doesn't apply to you, attend it anyway, support our own Tony Ong here, come and, uh, and, uh, and um, be part of this uh, MIA event. Uh. Mm. Yeah, okay. that will be next Tuesday, yeah. Uh, next, Tuesday, fifth, fifth, next Tuesday, fifth, fifth, next week, yes. next Tuesday. Next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, I'm more or less done, Nick. I think I all right, it's good. So what? I'm gonna go for like you can stop sharing right now, okay. and uh, the admin gonna bring in the announcement slide. Right after that, we're gonna get you to uh close the points. Of how could one use all this information that you have shared? Now, how could this spark some conversations out there to, to generate more leads, to have uh, more follow-up? And how could they actually use this massive information that you have uh, shared? Okay, now let's go to the announcement. So we have a Million Dollar Realtor a talk on the 12th of uh, November. So uh, do take note, like, it's actually 12th of November, uh, 2 p.m., which means like the regular uh, talk that we have on Monday night and Tuesday, uh, 2 o'clock, the next uh, two to three weeks will be off until we will only be back on the 12th of November. Yeah, yes. All right, so next. And so we have a database uh, bootcamp for those of you who really uh, still finding it struggling to uh, to sort out your database, to how to maximize the entire potential of your database. And so I already shared many, many times, right? We actually, uh, our phone is actually gold mine. No, we've been sitting on it, not leveraging on it. And many of us do not know even how to use it uh, properly. Do come and experience for yourself how you can really organize your database within a day itself. At the end of the workshop, no many have actually gonna get uh, more listings, uh, uh, more potential appointments uh, coming. It will happens on the twentieth of November. Share with all your PA and REA friends, uh, that this will actually entitle you for five CPD uh, hours. All right, next. And so, Vinny Mondays, you no, know, like, are you ready for 2025? You no, know, we actually first kick start with uh, I Ching to talk about the market trend, the budget, and it's so important for you to understand what's the trend of the market. Then, next um, seven to eight uh, sessions that we're going to have will then focus on the planning for 2025. First, starting with your GPS, your one page business plan, and how do you go from lead gen to uh, qualify your buyers and sellers? 
and to all the way to negotiate your contracts. I'll talk about the technology and systems and also like uh, even having a coach to actually uh, get you ready for 2025. Now get ready for the next uh, seven to eight series in uh, to get yourself ready for 2025. Next. Yes, that will be uh, next week. We're going to uh, have uh, William to co-host with me for the for the entire month of uh, November uh, for Winning Mondays. And also that first guest uh, on the board we're gonna, uh, will be uh, George Tan. Now, all of you know George, you know, is like very into the, the, the model and he's going to tell us really exactly how you should be planning for your goals, your priorities and the strategies for 2025. All right, with that, I think that's all for the announcement for uh, this week. And now we're back to I Ching for the last last word to everyone. Last words. Uh, I said so many yeah. words to me. <laughs> <laughs> last, <laughs> last now. <laughs> yeah, I think I think most important is uh, don't don't let uh, all these numbers scare you. Lah, I think uh, and always take the positive out of the, the scenario, the situations that we're in. So no matter what happens, uh, there's always uh, an opportunity. One. I, I always believe that no matter whatever the scenarios are, there's the positive side of it. So look for it. If you're unsure what to do, don't be unsure with yourself only. Yeah, I think it's good to talk it out, share with another colleague or seek uh, you know, another mentor's uh, opinions. Uh, and then, of course, whenever you seek advice and all that, uh, be open-minded. Uh. I think a lot of times uh, we, we fall short of being, being helped uh, is because we actually don't want to be helped. We want someone mm. to agree with us rather than uh, that means uh, I, I want you to agree with me and when you say something that's different uh, although it's good advice I don't want to hear it because it's not what I wanted to hear so sometimes some of us don't want a solution you know we actually want someone to agree with us so rather than put that kind of stand uh, it's not going to take us very far uh. so if you really open your if, if you really want to find a solution for whatever issues you're in be prepared to hear the ugly truth uh, yeah and also be prepared uh, to do what sometimes uh, is your least favorite thing to do lah. yeah so i think with that in mind uh, then uh, i think you can uh, uh, progress and also i uh, can look forward to 2025 uh, with new eyes of positivity lah. <laughs> okay all right thank you so much i think so with that we wish all of you a great uh, monday and also a great way ahead and look forward to see all of you again in the coming week so join me to really thank i think you know like for sharing all this insight with us now thank you i think thank you so much and have a great monday ahead bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.